at Duke, I conduct research on the development of pretreatments for the growth and survival of crops under Martian soil conditions. Commonly, the movie The Martian is talked about when they hear about my research. However, I can tell you that sustaining life on Mars is about more than whether a plant will grow. What you're supposed to be seeing is a fly-through of a possible habitation module on Mars. It is a closed ecological system that has um, been transplanted from Earth to Mars. An ecological system is a system that is composed of living organisms and non-living components that interact both in competitive and supportive ways. Closed simply means that the system has been sealed off from every, everything outside of it. The system works best when the community of living organisms is made up of many different species, a property known as biodiversity, a key component that is necessary to mitigate the risk of failure for any ecological system anywhere. But why should we build such a system on Mars? Why couldn't we build, say, another international space station for a habitation module and have food shipped in via supply chain? Well, it's a good question to ask. Let me tell you my reasoning. It can be said that one of the reasons that people have survived throughout the history of the Earth is due to them being able to adapt quickly to unplanned events. Humans have been able to survive and recover from these events um, from obtaining resources that they have found outside of their localities. Humans have evolved within this context. Earliest archaeological records have humans living in small groups of hunter-gatherers in localities in which they have become familiar with the local resources. What did they do when the local resources became depleted? How about later humans that evolved into agrarian societies? What did they do when the crop field that they were planting has a blight and wipes out all their crops? Even in modern cities today, where we have an urban ecological system that came from this adaptive process. What do they do when a natural disaster like a hurricane hits? Now, let's consider a modern city. It is an urban ecological system that, only, that does not only consist of the urban proper, but also all of the surrounding land. So, in the city proper, we have what we could call the habitation zone. The habitation zone is the place where people live and work in a safe and healthy environment. Beyond this, we have the agricultural zone where people can plant the food that they need to survive. And then outside of these two zones, we have the beginning of wilderness, or what I would call the ecological buffer zone. This zone provides ecological services that are used to support the agricultural and habitation zones, while also providing a biodiversity that is needed for competitive redundancy to mitigate risk. This model is called the three zone model, a system I developed in my sophomore year that is currently being used by my company to develop habitation modules for space exploration. Such as this one. I think we would all agree that such a system on Mars would be really cool. Um, so let's take a closer look. Inside the dome, we would find a variety of plant and bug life that has been carefully chosen based off the needs of the ecological system as well as the needs of the crew. However, as we go about attempting to establish this system, some plants will succeed while many are likely to fail. This is due to the plants evolving into a unique Martian ecology through being exposed to higher radiation levels, lower atmospheric pressure, and lower gravity. So what will our crew do? They will have to adapt into a unique Martian economy. They will have to go out and find the food-bearing plants in the ecological buffer zone and domesticate them into the agricultural zone. Aha, this one's working, good. One of the most common questions that I am asked is, how will I go about achieving this objective? I agree, it's a daunting problem. In situ resource limitations, a non-existent economy, an extreme space climate, and extremely long and expensive supply chain risks, limiting human expansion and settlement to anywhere outside of Earth. So, however, when you think about it, really the only significant difference between Mars and, say, drought-stricken Somalia is lower gravity, lower atmospheric pressure, lower light levels, lower temperature, 
higher radiation levels, and a longer supply chain. Oh, yeah. Beyond these, the Mars um, food security problem is very similar to the Earth food security problem. So seriously, wouldn't it make sense to solve the space sec food security problem by first solving problems with food security on Earth? With dwindling agricultural resources affecting our farms, local economic collapse affecting our inner cities and rural towns, climate change affecting regional food supplies, and political and geographically challenging supply chains preventing available food from reaching millions of people in both developing and developed nations, we are in need of more sustainable solutions for growing food and feeding people on Earth. So, when asked how I'm gonna go about doing this, I tell people the solution is easy. We first have to solve world hunger. But seriously, the food security problem in places like Somalia are just a little more simple than the Mars or Moon problem. The Somalia problem is a lack of natural resources problem, a local economic collapse problem, a climate change problem, and a political supply chain problem. But three things that Somalia does have in abundance are dirt, rocks, and sand. If we use the sand and rocks um, to create building materials using 3D printing technology, we can construct a system that incorporates sustainable innovations to reduce agricultural um, resource replenishment requirements to what could be provided locally, creating an eco-agricultural system that can be made with local plants, local microorganisms, and local bugs. With the system in place, we can bootstrap a local economy and not have to worry about establishing and maintaining a supply chain. You may say, how is this different from building in a greenhouse? A greenhouse relies on a supply chain to bring materials into the system. It is not self-sufficient, meaning that it is not able to function and be productive by itself indefinitely. The quasi-closed ecological system we could build and maintain with the local community is built to be self-sustaining and provide a local agricultural system from which the local community can benefit. But what's a little bit easier than this? How about a remote location in a developed nation, such as the Arctic Circle of Canada or Alaska? The Inuit people are having their traditional food supplies and economic activity wiped out by climate change, and yet they don't want to leave their homeland. In order to um, stay, many are having to rely on extremely expensive pre-packaged foods that are shipped in from production companies in North America. Yet, they have plenty of land and water. Their major problem with growing their food year-round is the lack of sunlight for half the year and cold, tempers for mo cold temperatures for most of the year. Um, we can build eco-agricultural systems that can function year-round by closing off the system from the surrounding environment to reduce on heat loss and providing sustainable lighting systems. The system could then provide a local source of food and allow the community to boost their economy by no longer having to send their money out of local circulation. But still, what is a little bit easier than this? How about an inner city in a developed nation? such as Mexico City or the south side of Richmond, Virginia. Places like this are considered food deserts, with no extensive local agricultural system, no supermarkets, and a high jobless rate with depressed local economies. The biggest challenge in such locations is building an agricultural base that is self-sufficient enough to boost the economy. Such a system will not last if food growers have to send the money earned from their customers outside of the system um, to obtain costly resources to run their farms. We can build systems that require just enough new resources to replace the food value leaving the system. The local resources we could use include an abandoned piece of land or lot, um, the soil on site, local and traditional plants and crops, the knowledge of the people in the community, and local fertilizer, power, and farm maintenance businesses that are present or could be established. A depressed community could then rebuild their economy on this agricultural basis and have the ability to grow their own fresh and clean food year round. But what is a little easier than this? You can kind of see where I'm going with this. 
Small farms and food growers in developed nations are struggling with staying in business. The cost of fertilizer and fuel, limited resource of water, and the com competition of conglomerated industrial farms have been driving family farms out of business for decades. The problem is only getting worse, and where we lose small farms and food growers, we depress rural communities and eliminate local food sources. We are currently working on developing sustainable, innovative solutions to 14 functional resource areas, such as water and waste reclamation and retention, and light availability 365 days per year that small farms and food growers will be able to use to decre decrease the cost of business, increase yield, and remain operational in off-season and poor growth conditions. Deep Space Ecology is a company that people in the space industry would say is a new space company. The primary core goal of new space companies is Earth first. We create solutions for problems on Earth first for later spin into space applications, such as creating sustainable food systems on Mars. And who knows, maybe we'll start building habitation systems for the oceans and find ourselves living in the subsurface oceans of Europa. The possibilities are limitless. These are the voyages of deep space ecology. Our 10-year mission, to provide solutions for food security on Earth, spread life throughout our solar system, to boldly go into uncharted waters where no one has gone before. Thank you.